Today's forests are explosive at the service of the cellulose sector. The cellulose sector, aka the paper industry, little more than a month since the country's largest pulping company has called. Can you believe it? They've called for an increase in the number of eucalyptus plantations in Portugal. Citizens are mobilizing now for just the opposite, a sustainable forest of the future. Sign me up. I'm up for this. I'm up for this. And um, we've heard the theme tune, really, haven't we? As we gird our loins against cellulose sector, uh, one that is not explosive at the service of the cellulose industry. They say various groups have scheduled protests up and down the country for Sunday based on a manifesto against forest fires and the role of the cellulose industry in eucalyptus monocultures in Portugal. This is an important uh, article, I would say. Says Luza, the protest organized for Lisboa, Porto, Coimbra, Braga, Odimira, Villanova, do Poares, uh, and Certa, Certa, argues that Portugal needs fewer eucalyptus trees and to build forests and forest areas that are resilient to climate change that don't just serve the interests of big business. Well, there's a thing, a future that doesn't just serve the interests of big business and their buddies in government. Did I just say that out loud? But conserve soil and water in the face of and threat of desertification. The only desertification we want in Portugal is, uh, you know, a nice um, arroz dos or pudim at the end of our meal. That's the only desertification we want around here. Uh, what we're demanding is a diverse inhabited forest that has these means of combat and surveillance all year round, nature wardens and watchmen, foresters. I'm tearing up at the sound of this. This is how it used to be, isn't it? Notions of conserving water and soils to avoid the threat of climate change with species that are suitable for each territory and that are also related to diverse economic activities that allow people to earn an income in rural areas. Oh, my goodness. Be Beatrice Javier, a member of the steering committee. We need this. We need you on the show, Beatrice. A member of the steering committee behind the protest told the state news agency also. It's interesting, actually, from what you were saying earlier, T. Duck, about um, freedom of the press. And state news agency has an Orwellian ring to it, doesn't it? Who doesn't like an Orwellian ring first thing in the morning? I don't. According to Javier, the areas of abandoned eucalyptus in the country destroy the territory. Yeah, because once they've had what they want, they just hugger off, don't they? Leaving these areas of abandoned eucalyptus in the country, destroying the territory, accelerating desertification, and are precisely the opposite of the goal of a biodiverse and resilient landscape, which can withstand shocks like major fires and which does not pose a threat to those who live near it. Now, those of you, I know people are split on, on their feelings about climate change and uh, all that goes on behind the idea, uh, the concept, the ideology, if you like, of climate change. Here's something you can be united about, right? Who does it? I mean, you, you, I, I would think everyone in our community would agree. I mean, even if they're not excited about it, they would, they, they would, they would at the very worst be indifferent to a biodiverse and resilient landscape, which could can withstand shocks like major fires and doesn't pose a threat to those who live near it. On that account alone, this is a great idea. And I'm, I want to read again uh, what Beatrice is proposing here. And I want her on the show. And I, w I would like us to get behind this. If we have a project uh, which we can throw ourselves behind, that's the kind of, well, it's not trans political because it's deeply political in many ways, but it, it need politics needn't get in the way of the demand of a diverse inhabited forest that has these means of combat and surveillance all year round. And that's combating and surveillance of fires, of course, not, not other things. Nature wardens and watchmen, watch people if you prefer, foresters, notions of conserving water and soils to avoid the threat of climate change um, with species that are suitable for each territory. Yes, check and that are related to diverse economic activities that allow people to earn an income in rural areas. I'm all for it. The aim of Sunday's protest. Have we missed these, or are they about to happen? When was this? Uh, this is the dateline, 30th of August. So this coming Sunday, these are the protests. Uh, are pushing for a forest that isn't abandoned, that either you know who it belongs to, uh, or to through a forest engineer. Okay, you, you know it belongs to a forest register, I beg your pardon, or it has 
to be the responsibility of the state. Wow, the state has to take responsibility, she added, suggesting the government has already proven itself incapable of reacting by keeping everything the same after the tragedies of 2017. Now, here is where I find it interesting. Often people are dismayed by how governments react to things. And then the next thing they call for is the government to take action and do something about it. Um, yes, I don't see any harm in that, but I think we need um, a transcendent strategy as well, don't we? Um, and in this instance, what immediately comes to mind are partnerships, are a different kind of commercial partnership or a joint initiative with, with, with the corporations, government, but more importantly, people's cooperatives, people starting associations that can be supported by, but not dominated by the government, the state and corporations who oversee this. Um, and not certain people who are buying up loads of land around the world for their own benefit, <laughs> but buying up of land for the joint benefit and for, for the benefit of, of the planet herself, you could say. Um, and overseen by cooperatives and committees of people who can subscribe or are driven by the values spoken about by Beatrice here. Uh, at least, I mean, even if you don't like the sound of that, it's got to be better than corporations with the sole aim of just turning the place into a desert so they can make more money for their shareholders whilst selling us uh, loads of printer paper and toilet paper. Um, you know, the, the, I'm sure we've got better ways of doing, of meeting that need without destroying the countryside of Portugal. The protest manifesto has been compiled by around 60 people from all walks of life and ages. There you go, people working together, calling for a citizen uprising, yay, against the giant risk that Portugal is running as a country in the face of the climate crisis with an explosive forest at the service of the cellulose industry. In a statement being widely shared all over social media, the group behind the initiatives insists that those responsible for the situation today will have to be held to account. Yay. We have to hold the cellulose companies that brought us this far, the navigate, namely the Navigator Company, the Altri Flourish Trail, are responsible as well as the governments that rolled out the carpet for them, from all parties, that is. They didn't stop them and handed them the future of our country. We can't accept this any longer. The pulping companies have to pay for the destruction of the past and the present, at which point they whistle and point towards their... Um, B Corp registration and probably want to give us a bit of greenwashing. I mean, fair enough. They might be incensed by this idea and demand to come on the show and put the record straight. Navigator, Altri Floristral, you're welcome. We can't accept this any longer. This statement continues. Thank you, Mrs. M. The pulping companies have to pay for the destruction of the past and the present. We have to de eucalyptize, de eucalyptize. Portugal remove wow 700,000 hectares hectares of eucalyptus forest how big is that in football pitches everybody which corresponds to the areas abandoned where eucalyptus has grown out of control this decade well i didn't know about i mean it, it makes complete and obvious sense doesn't it when you hear that i mean what does happen to eucalyptus after it's been used by these companies it um when they abandon the plantations who guess which tree dominates? It's going to be the eucalyptus, isn't it? Um, and they want to transform these areas into a resilient forest, like the Basako forest, right? The Basako Palace forest. Go take a look. It looks like a more natural native forest. I know they've introduced some species there, but that also can be done sensitively and intelligently, can't it? What's up with us? Um, that can cope with the hotter, drier future that the climate crisis has produced. We have to do this to prevent a desert. The perennial discussion against eucalyptus uh, following devastating wildfires reignited literally this summer in the wake of the Odimera fires. The Lisbon protest is due to start at 7 p.m. at Largo da Estefania. I would like to get some sort of coverage of that from where it will march to the Institute for Nature, Conservation and Forests, the ICNF, and the headquarters of the Navigator Company, Portugal's premier cellulose manufacturer, the company whose CEO said in July that it needs more. That's daring and bold, isn't it? We'll see what happens when we say we need more eucalyptus plantations uh, in order to become sustainable. Huh? Was that is that the CEO of of uh, I want I, I'd be interested genuinely. I'd be interested in their thinking that, uh, that has them demand for more eucalyptus plantations in order to become more sustainable. 
Is that for their company's profits to become more sustainable, I wonder? In Porto, the protest will take place at 3 p.m. in front of the Palacio of the Cristal in Odimera, Beja district. It begins at 7 p.m. in the Okaish Bar, marching on to the town hall and in Sertar. Castelo Branco district, the initiative will take place at 5 p.m. in the Almeida de Carvalho and in Villanova de Poirage. Uh, uh, I think it is Villanova de Poirage, isn't it? Um, district of Coimbra, the protest is due to start at 5 p.m. in front of the town hall and in Coimbra at 5.30 at Casa Azul and in the Chupal National Forest. Oh, sorry, in the Chupal National Forest at Casa Azul. The timing and location of the Braga event is still to be confined. Great work, Natasha Don. Thank you for bringing that to our attention. That is the uh, citizens mobilizing against the giant risk of eucalyptus, threatening Portugal's other native forests, of course. Amazing. Thank you very much for that. Uh, we may go back to the papers in just a moment. Let's see what you've been saying about this.